What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It feels so good to be sat back down in this background doing a makeup tutorial for you. One that I know you guys are gonna love. So many of you were complimenting my makeup in my previous video. Um, I did post this up on my Instagram and I did name um, products that I used for this one, but since then I've been playing with different products, found some amazing ones that I was inspired by. I recently watched Sarah Ashcroft's video. Uh, she did a kind of soft glow makeup look that she'd been loving and she'd been also inspired by Instagram makeup artists as have I. Uh, shout out Sophie VJ and Brooke Turnbull. Uh, both of them I've had the pleasure. They have done my makeup in the past. Queen of the soft glam looks. Um, so many amazing Instagram makeup artists at the moment killing these soft glam looks. So I just wanted to do my take on it and maybe introduce you guys to some new products if you missed it from them and maybe it's some new tips and techniques for you guys to try during this quarantine. Why not if there was any time to sit down and play with makeup I feel like now is the time. I have left Sarah Ashcroft's YouTube video in the description bar because like I said was very inspired by her and also Brooke and Sophie's IGs but this is the look as you can see very matte soft looking skin but we've got lots of contour and shapes going on again with the eyes I kind of not as gone for as light a lid as I'm seeing a lot of people, but that's just to my taste. These lashes are so gorgeous. Oh, can't wait for you guys to see this tutorial and watch the transformation, because believe me, the beginning of the video before I start the makeup is a serious before and after, but that's when you know it's gonna be a good video. We love a good before and after. Again, sorry, this is such a long intro, but before we get started, before anyone asks, this top is amazing. It's from Zara, this ruching, sorry titties, but so flattering, this blue, I'm living for it. Like I said, it's from Zara. I'll leave it linked down below if you guys care, because I feel like I'll get a lot of questions on it. Rambling done. I cannot wait for you guys to see this makeup tutorial and all the products that I use, because like I said, some bomb products that have made a huge difference in my makeup routine. So if you're loving the look already, please make sure to give it a thumbs up right now. It literally takes two seconds and it means and makes such a difference to me. I will shut up now. Let's jump right into the video. Okay, so we are actually gonna be starting with our eyes first. Now I know I look so crazy. I feel like that's when you know it's gonna be a good makeup look because you, you look crazy from the offset. I like exfoliated and did a mask this morning, which is why I'm like two totally different colors that like all the tan has come off of my face. So please bear that in mind as we're going through this makeup tutorial. But anyway, with the eyes, a little tip that I've been loving. Um, I, in terms of when it comes to the Instagram glam makeup look, I don't like using um, like a concealer as a eye primer anymore um, because it's a bit brighter and I don't really want my eyes to be super like right against my face. I want it to be like sort of blend in with my skin makeup and I want the brightness to remain underneath my eyes. So actually for the eyeshadow base, I'm just gonna be taking the foundation that I'm using because it's matte, it's full coverage, it's basically gonna act the same way as my concealer in terms of like as the base. If you want the eyelid to be like a little bit brighter, go ahead, like I said, this is just my take on it. So for eyeshadow palettes, I feel like I've got like a couple of suggestions. Obviously the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette says it all, it's got a bunch of like those beautiful matte warm tones and I have been loving that one recently but I've also been loving the So Su by Suzanne Jackson Hot Fire Remastered Palette. I love this just because it's got more of those like olive camel, those kind of tones, and they're the ones that I have been loving when it comes to this. We're also throwing in another eye product, but um, in terms of like the matte shadows, I just love the colors of this one. And if you've never heard of this eyeshadow palette, I'll introduce you to a new one, as if anyone needs another warm tone eyeshadow palette, but I really love this one and the price point is great. So I'm gonna be starting off with the shade Flicker. It's a beautiful transition color. It's like a orangey camel desert kind of color. You know, it's not like orange, orange. It's got like a hint of yellow, hint of mustard, that sort of color mixed in. And we're just gonna be buffing it out. Don't worry the fact that we've taken the primer down to here. I'm gonna be cleaning up underneath my eye anyway. A lot of the brushes I'm gonna be using are these pink ones and they are the Doll Beauty brushes. These are amazing. They are so good, so fluffy. I'll leave them linked down below. We're gonna be using a few of these in today's video that I love for different reasons, just like because of the shape. There's actually not a huge amount of eyeshadow involved in this eye look and you can mix up 
the shades can make it darker, make it lighter, anything to suit you. This is just kind of like the color spectrum that I've been loving. I'm then gonna take the shade Ignite, which is this one here. It's a very MAC uninterrupted color. If you guys know that, it's like that mustard, bogey green that you, like green? Brown that you either love or hate, but I love. But like it's just a little bit softer, but it's still warm enough to complement my eye color. I think it's beautiful on everyone. I'm just taking a dull beauty brush again. This one's just slightly more like tapered, but still super fluffy. I'm making sure to take this from like all the way in to all the way out, because we are gonna be lightly carving the crease. And it'll be at that part where the product you use will decide sort of how like bright you want this eye look to be. I'm just going back in with the fluffy brush to diffuse this out. I feel like this particular look is very Sophie VJ inspired. If you follow her on Instagram, I would have mentioned at the beginning, it's like those kind of makeup artists that I've been super inspired by and I feel like everyone is at the moment. But yeah, I'm just gonna diffuse that out. It's gonna be a winged look, so taking it really far out is gonna work in your favor then we can just clean it out and it's super winged. But in terms of like the crease colors, that is literally it. Now, when it came to the lid, I was going through phases of like carving out the crease with concealer, but then I was obviously having to set that in place and then trying to find an eyeshadow to set that in place. Sometimes I found that it changed the color slightly. I don't know, I was really struggling on finding my perfect lid matte shade for when it came to this look. And then I remembered these, and these are the Huda Matte and Metal melted shadows and I'm going to be using the matte side and this is the double pump latte and drop top duo we're going to be taking the double pump latte side just look at this color so I'm going to go from inner to about you know three quarters of the way across basically using this as if it was concealer but what I love about this is that it dries matte and the color stays the same so I don't have to put anything on the top you obviously totally can if you wanna make it a shimmer or something like that, but I just love the matte shade of this. And it's the perfect, perfect nude color for me. Like, I love this color. And also, I've always said this about cream shadows. I just make things so quick. Just glide it on, even if it's like a shimmery one, or in this case, it's matte. You just glide it on, let it dry, bam, like, it's done. Like. So, and for me, that's like, that's the perfect nude shade. Like, with those colors, I'm obsessed. So I'm just gonna like, let this dry a little bit. I don't want it to transfer, so I'm just gonna like, look, keep looking down. You can like, help to like, blend it and like, help it dry. Like, you can pat it with your fingers. But I've had loads of questions about my nails. They are stick-on nails. Stick-on nails from Kiss, just like, black ones. Who knew that black short nails were a vibe? Like, as someone that gets brown and makeup and tan on, like, anything white or, like, clothes, nails, I just ruin them as much as I love to look at them. Never lasts on me. I'm loving short black nails, and these have lasted me so long. I just stick them on with the elegant touch glue. But, yeah, I'm obsessed. But, yeah, blending with your finger really helps to diffuse that out and just make sure that it's all kind of set in place. But I'm just gonna go back in with that tapered dull beauty brush and kind of mix the flicker and ignite shade together just on to the lid. Blend it out. And that's basically it for the eyeshadow in terms of what's going on on the lid. I don't want it any darker. I'm wearing this sort of like during the day, 100% could um, make it darker in the crease, but you can see we are gonna be doing like a dark smoky wing. Um, so that's kind of enough darkness for me. So when it comes to the wing, you could totally do this with like a liquid, but I've been really, really loving a pencil. I think it's a little bit softer, easier to diffuse out. And I just, I don't know, I like the way it looks when you place shadow on the top, it doesn't look too, too perfect, and I'm really loving the kind of just like slightly more sultry, messy look, but we've still got like the cleanness underneath, but on the top, it's just kind of all like diffused and blended together, which I love. So this is the MAC Costa Riche eye pencil, oldie but goodie, I'm obsessed with this, and these just work really nicely on the eye. So you could totally clean up underneath first, give yourself a little of a, like a guideline, but I feel kind of confident to freehand and you just kind of want to aim like towards the, where the end of your brow is going to be. And just little motions like 
So towards the outermost part, I like to start on the like the outermost part of the eye. I don't want to start all the way in just in case you know I go I start too far in and I'm like, damn it, can't take that back. Just gonna do the wing. And we are gonna be smoking this out with a dark brown shadow, which is why I love this because there's not really a huge amount of pressure to make this super neat from the offset because we're gonna be blending it out on the top with shadow and then cleaning it up underneath with a white. So just like a wing like that. I'm also gonna take this pencil and tight line my eye. That's just gonna like tie it all together, add to like the sultry ness and smokiness of that. So I'm just now gonna take a angled brush and the shade Warmth and Smolder. I'm gonna mix them together from the same Sosu palette. Just kind of like lightly tap, tap in between. And I'm just gonna like basically press this where we placed the pencil and then just lift it a little bit higher and just kind of smoke out. It's better to like drag it down because like I said, we're cleaning up underneath in a minute. Basically just going over where we put the pencil. You can just see it just looks so smoky and soft and just a little, I don't know, a little less harsh than if you use a liquid liner. But don't get me wrong, I love a like, black liquid liner. Been really, really loving brown liquid liners, as you guys know. But I just think a pencil has, just goes a bit more with this look. So now I'm gonna take me wipe and clean up underneath the eye. And that, is the eye look done. I feel like it looks super crazy right now because I've got no skin on, but I'm just gonna put mascara on. These lashes are it, okay? These are a combination of like my favorite kinds of lashes. So these are Lily lashes in the style Miami, but they're Miami flair. So they're the wispiness, whoa. They're the wispiness of the iconic Miami lash, but they go from short to long instead of like, medium the whole way around like the normal Miami lash so I'm gonna go ahead and put mascara and these lashes on and I will show you what the eyes look like you just want something wispy flared like that still gives that natural lash look but they're really gonna complement the eyes and I love these I'll show you what they look like because I'll stop rambling and I'll just let them do the talking so these are the eyes with the lashes on again another little tip with winged out lashes if you place them teeny bit slightly higher. I feel like you can only really get away with this if you're doing a wing, because then the shadow eyeliner, whatever, will mask the fact that you've placed them a teeny bit higher. That's just gonna give you that more sort of like lifted and elevated look. But now, um, my favorite part, we can move on to the skin. I look so crazy. Remind me never again to completely exfoliate my face before doing a video when I've just freshly fake tanned, because this color difference, it's gonna send y'all crazy, I know it is, but <laughs> forgive me. So a product that I got from Sarah's video, which again, I think she got from makeup artists or something, and I've actually seen so many people rave about, is the Sika, the jo well, it's the Dr. Jar Sika Pear Derma Green Solution. This is amazing at color correcting. It's like a green, slightly thicker, moisturizer so I'm just gonna place this all over my face but mainly focusing on the bits that have slight discoloration to them which is always just like around my nose and I like this because it's like a moisturizer but it's slightly more like a serum based moisturizer maybe it's just it's definitely got that slightly oh I've got some masks still left in my nose like thicker priming feel I can already see that that is helping to like one, add the most beautiful glow to my skin, but two, really to counteract any redness going on. It does say that it is a primer, like on its own, and it acts really well underneath makeup, but look, look around my nose, all the discoloration has gone already, so thank you so much, Sarah, for recommending this in her video. I did say at the beginning, I have left her video in the description bar down below if you guys are interested. I am actually gonna go in with the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Perfecting Primer on the top, just a little bit. I did say you can just use that moisturizer as a primer on its own. I like to use a few products um, on the base of my skin because I'm quite funny about the, I don't know, like the texture and the feeling left on my skin right before I put 
foundation on. It's got to feel a certain way and then I feel comfortable putting the foundation on the top. And that moisturizer, like, feels so good. But I don't know, in my head it just feels a little bit too, I don't know, almost like... It's not oily, but it gives me that vibe, and this primer is just a little bit more of that wet feel that you guys know that I like. So when they like combine together, and also just because I like this one for like just perfecting my base anyway. This brush just helps to move and smooth everything around so it's all in place. And then finally, I've been loving this before. My makeup, I love it afterwards and I rave about it afterwards all the time, but the Hydra Matte Fixing Spray with Hyaluronic Acid in it from Revolution Pro. Quick spritz of the skin, Hyaluronic Acid and me. We're besties. I love it so, so much. And then just going over with the brush, just to make sure it's all pressed and soaked into the skin. Those three together for me have just been doing the most. I love it. I feel like I've got like skincare going on while I'm putting makeup on. You can see I now just have like, a, in my opinion, a perfectly prepped skin. The texture and the feel of my skin is right, ready for foundation. And for foundation, I think you just need a matte, full or medium to full coverage foundation to achieve this. And I love it. The Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundation is always one of my favorites. It says it's for normal to oily skin, and especially when you've put like a lot of skincare or prep on, this just looks amazing on top. I love it. I always reach back for this one like before a night out or anything like that. It just never lets me down. I love the color of this one. Um, I got this one in the shade 332. I think I got it in America, but I'm pretty sure you can get it on Amazon or something like that. I will leave the link to this foundation down below, just have a browse of the shades and if you want this specific one, because in America they always sell like a lot more of the like more tanned olive shades that I like to use for like when I'm freshly fake tanned like I am right now. This one is just beautiful. I am going to be using a lighter shade of concealer that will help to like brighten up the skin. So as I apply this, obviously you can see I've got fake tan on, so it may look a little bit scary, but it's called highlight and contour for a reason because we're going to be reshaping my face. I'm just using my sponge, my Real Techniques sponge to apply this. And because this is the same product that we use to prep the eye, you can see when I'm like blending um, and applying the product up here, it just kind of transitions into where we applied all the eyeshadow. But yeah, this foundation is just my perfect, perfect tanned color. I love the undertone of this one. It's not too red. It's not too like, or, like orange or too yellow. It's like such a beautiful medium olive undertone. Like so. So once we've got like the base, the base down, I'm now gonna actually contour my skin First. And again, when I've had my makeup done, they always contour before highlight. And I, I always think like, why do you do that? But then when I watch, when I've been watching all these like Instagram lives and Instagram videos as they're doing it, it does actually make more sense. You can use your concealer to kind of help diffuse out that contour shade. And also um, with this Instagram glam matte look, the highlight or the concealer comes all the way out here. And that's how you get that lifted effect. And sometimes when you're con if you contour after you apply the highlight, you kind of have to work around that. So this just kind of makes it easier. Um, I'm going to be using the Huda Beauty Tan Tour in the shade Light. And again, I'm going to place this quite high. The higher you kind of place it, the more lifted and sculpted your cheekbones will look. Um, I'm going to use the bronzer, I think, to kind of bronze up, but I'll apply a little bit anyway, just so it blends and looks a little bit more natural, but this is definitely more of a cooler tone product. So I'm only really trying to use this to contour rather than warm up the skin. And speaking of the Doll Beauty brushes, this Doll brush, I've shouted it out on my Instagram stories before, it's amazing. This is what it looks like when it's not got product on it, but you can see it's like a flat, uh, flat top brush, uh, so good for contouring your nose, where you just want flat, minimal lines. I do like to contour my nose with a cream, like so. I may go back in with a powder contour, but if I don't, I'm gonna shout this out now. The NARS Zen, it's called a blush, is the most beautiful 
contour shade for your nose. I'm telling you, so beautiful. If you've got light to medium skin tone, that is amazing. Can't really actually go too wrong with it or like too heavy with it. It's beautiful. But now I'm just gonna blend out this contour. I'm using a different brush. I'm using more of like a dual fiber brush. Blend that out. I'm blending upwards. You don't want to take it down. You want the skin to look lifted. But yeah, this is the shade light and it's perfect for contouring sort of like medium, light medium skin tones. I always like to just double double blend with my sponge, like so. Now for concealer, I'm actually gonna take the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, which is quite a full coverage, but I'm just gonna take this on kind of like a brush like this. Now this is in the shade Light 3 Honey. I'm just gonna pop that underneath the eye, and this is where you're really gonna like lift it up. I'm not gonna apply too, too much of this, because it's quite full coverage. And we are gonna be applying another concealer in a sec, but just dragging it down. A little goes a long way with this product, 100%. But I've just been really, really loving, well one, the coverage of this. Two, for me, this is the perfect amount of pink uh, in a concealer. And you might be looking at it thinking, well, I can't really see much pink going on. But there is like definitely like in the pot as well. Um, pink really helps to counter out any darkness underneath your eyes and I don't know about you guys, I really need that at the moment. Um, my bags are crazy and the coverage of this is just a little fuller coverage than a liquid concealer and when the girls do my makeup I feel like they always use this to start with or if they don't use it to start with they're using it afterwards anyway somehow it's incorporated in to the routine i don't really like to apply concealer to my forehead as much i feel like when you apply too much product on your forehead for me sometimes it just looks a bit like caked and i don't like that but anyway now i'm going to use the sponge um in sarah's video she used the technique of picking up a bit more and, and using that to help kind of blend it out. But with this particular concealer underneath my eye, I don't really feel the need to do that. It's very full coverage from the offset, so I don't really want to apply too much more. But you can see, I have taken this concealer all the way up. I want that line to remain there. Like that's a very important and a great tip for lifting like your eye look. Do not diffuse that line. You want the color difference, you want that line to remain there. Okay, I was gonna apply another concealer to help brighten. Um, I'll do a little bit. This is the Barry M Concealer in Kiki. I'm only literally one, two, one, two, tiny bit. And I'm actually just gonna use a brush to press that into the skin, like so. And take this up on the sides of the nose as well. Bob's your uncle. Okay, so that is all the cream products done. Now, this is a step that I feel is super, super important. Um, I've been doing it for a while now. I was actually on a Fenty Beauty Zoom call. This is kind of like a virtual launch event for their new cream products. And the global artist Hector was on there. He said to do this as well. I've seen all the makeup artists doing this. You actually want to set your face first with a pressed powder before you bake. I feel like that just officially sets everything in place, adds a final little layer of coverage before you go in with your baking powder. I rave about these Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powders. They are amazing, but I'm just gonna press that right on top of where we've just put all that concealer. Again, following that line. Really, we don't wanna move product, we want it to set product, so just Press, 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 press. Once you have done that, now we can bake. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Banana Powder. But with this particular brush, I'm not gonna take it up there just yet. I'm just press, pressing this right here, baking this area. Um, I'm now actually gonna take that little doll beauty brush I was talking to you about, the one with the flat top. Take a bit of powder and I'm gonna use this right there. It is the perfect size for getting that sharp line and like making sure that it remains like that. So now the powder is baking away. Now is a great time to go ahead and do your brows. You guys know 
I'm always using this. These are the only brow products that I ever use. These are the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencils. I kind of mix up with a couple of shades. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my brow with shade three, and then I'm gonna use shade 3.5 for any additional details. I take so f***ing long to do my eyebrows, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do them in off camera. Everyone's got different shapes. There's no tricks about it. I'm literally filling in my eyebrows with a pencil. I just love the way that this looks. And then I'm gonna go in with the Gimme Brow in shade three. And let me go ahead and actually give myself some brows. So now both brows are done. We can just dust away the powder. Kind of feel like I've lost my bronze a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with bronzer. I'm using the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Dark Tan. These are forever my favorite bronzers. They are actually just face powders, and because of that, they just blend so beautifully into the skin. They're not too, too pigmented, but when you're applying bronzer, you always naturally wanna, you know, do that three motion, but we still wanna keep that line there. So I'm just kind of keeping it on a straight, and then just onto the forehead. Just a little dusting on my nose. I'm actually just gonna quickly finish up the eyes and I'm gonna take that Ignite shade, which is like the MAC uninterrupted color. This color underneath the eye. It's still warm tone, so it's gonna really complement like blue and green eyes. I think it's so beautiful. And basically any eye color, like look. So this is actually the eyes complete. Final step of the face is blush. I think this is a key, key step of this makeup look. It's very kind of blush orientated, matte blush. I got this, Elliot gave me this the other day. This is from a brand called Il Maquillage. This is their baked mineral blush in poker face. This is a beautiful, like matte peach shade, I love this. And what I love about this, this peach, is like the perfect orangey peach. So really gonna tie everything together in the eyes. And he wasn't lying. Did I lie? Did I lie? Did I lie? <laughs> That's my favorite meme ever. Okay, and now onto the lips. So feel free, um, I don't really feel like there's much of an Instagram trend when it does come to the lips. Um, I'm still seeing super glossy lips everywhere, uh, matte lips everywhere if you wanna stick with the theme. But a lot of you guys ask me on my Instagram how I get my lips looking so glossy and then staying so glossy. You guys know literally like in every look I've been using the Fenty Fussy Lip Gloss. Nothing is like this, it tastes so good and it just, it lasts all day but I recently got my hands on this new product which I'm freaking obsessed with and I think you guys are gonna love it too. This part doesn't change, I'm gonna be lining my lips with the Morphe Lip Liner in Love Bite. Love Bite is just my perfect nude lip liner shade. I'm then gonna use the Huda Beauty Liquid Lip in the shade Girlfriend. Then you could totally leave it there. But you know me, I love a gloss and I wanna put you guys on to this. This is the Grand Illusion Glossy Liquid Lip Color from MAC. And this is in the shade, Shane? Shane. This is in the shade Goldilocks. Now when I tell you, this is about to make my lips go from eh to oh my God, I want you to suck my right now. This might be too much for some of you guys um, if you don't like a glossy lip, but I do. And the fact that this is so comfortable and so juicy looking, I just, I had to show you. But like I said, leave it matte, have it satin, whatever. I've just recently purchased this and I'm obsessed. But this is the finished makeup look. I'm just gonna go ahead and set the skin. And I've been really loving the Morphe setting spray. Like I've just been seeing so many people talk about it and use it. I love the, the like how like misty it is. It smells so good. Yeah, so this is the finished makeup look. So this is the finished makeup look, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, learned some new tips, maybe found some new products to try. I feel like during this time, it's so fun to just sit and experiment and play with makeup and just work on like new techniques and tricks that just make your makeup look amazing. Um, shout out to all the girls that I was inspired by. Like I said, Sarah's video, I've left it in the description bar down below. My favorite makeup artist, Brooke, Sophie, all of the girls just killing it out there on Instagram with these soft glam looks. I'm always 
always inspired by them so make sure you check them out I've left all the products for you in the description bar down below as well as like brushes and stuff like that I've just tried to leave as much as possible to make it easier for you guys I had so much fun at doing this makeup look I feel like I haven't done a makeup tutorial in ages so make sure you smash that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video you guys make sure you stay home and stay safe bye guys Oh, oh, oh.